Let us study the Word of God together with the sermon titled, Those Who Are God's People and Those Who Are Not. Just by looking, it is hard for us to distinguish between those who are God's people and those who are not. However, God has promised to awaken us to a way that enables us to distinguish between them. Therefore, today, let us study about the importance of the Passover and how to distinguish between those who are God's people and those who are not. Since the New Covenant Passover allows us to have greater hope for the eternal kingdom of heaven, we should guide many souls to keep it. The will of God contained in the Passover is of utmost importance. It is because God is the subject of our salvation. How much value does God put on the Passover? And how does he view it? What is God's will concerning the Passover? Let us find out the answer to these questions by turning to Numbers chapter 9. Let's see chapter 9, verse 1. Let's take a look at Numbers chapter 9, verse 1. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai, in the first month of the second year, after they came out of Egypt. He said, Have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Whose will is this? Through the Passover, God will surely grant the blessings of the eternal kingdom of heaven, eternal salvation, and the forgiveness of sins. This profound will of God is contained in the truth of the Passover. That is why God said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. However, according to the law of the Old Testament, those who touched a dead body were unclean for a week. And if the Passover fell within that period, they could not participate in it. For these people, God provided the opportunity to observe the second Passover. Let's move on to verse 6. But some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, We have become unclean because of a dead body. But why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, Wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, When any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body or are away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover. Since the Passover must be kept, regardless of the circumstance, God permitted those who could not gather in the Jerusalem temple to observe it in the second month. According to verse 5, the Israelites kept the Passover at twilight on the 14th day of the first month, which is its appointed time. However, God granted a second chance, one month later, to those who had special circumstances that prevented them from keeping the Passover in the first month. That's why, in verse 11, it is written, but they are to do it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb, together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. Verse 13. But if anyone who is ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from their people. Who said this? God revealed his will through a man named Moses. What would happen to those who failed to celebrate the Passover? God said they would be cut off from the people. In other words, since in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, it is written, our citizenship is in heaven, what will happen to their citizenship? They will be deprived of their citizenship because they are not qualified to be citizens. 
Whose will and intention is this? It is God's will and intention. While preaching, we encourage others, you must keep the Passover. However, people often respond. What matters is having faith in God, whether we keep the Passover or not. However, doesn't believing in God mean that we should follow and keep all of God's teachings? If we believe in God, it is our duty and natural mindset to follow his teachings. However, if one claims to believe in God, but their actions do not reflect their faith, then it cannot be considered true faith in God. If anyone fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from the people. This is God's command. If we look around us today, there are many churches. As the Bible expresses, as numerous as the sand on the seashore, there are so many of them in the global village today. However, if they do not keep the Passover, where do they all stand? Where will they be cut off from? Let's try to put it simply. It means, they are not God's people. It is not our judgment, but God's judgment that says so. If God has already made such a judgment and decision, can they have the kingdom of heaven and salvation? They absolutely cannot have either of them. That is why, when Jesus came to this earth, for whom did he establish the Passover? He said that it was established for us. Hasn't God repeatedly taught and emphasized this to us? While the Passover contains various meanings, promises, and significance, above all, the command to keep the Passover is indeed a decree from God the precious truth that reflects his will and intention. Therefore, only those who observe the Passover today can be considered true believers in God and confidently introduce themselves as God's people who have the citizenship in heaven. Everyone, please think about the heavenly citizenship. What does having citizenship mean? Can you live in that country or not? You can surely live in that country. You and I hold the heavenly citizenship. What proves this? Doesn't God's covenant through the Passover testify to this? That is why it is written in Numbers chapter 9. If anyone fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from the people. It is God's decree and intention. It is the law of heaven. Nevertheless, there are numerous people on this earth who do not keep the Passover and yet claim to believe in God, saying, I can go to heaven. I can receive the forgiveness of sins. I can be saved. However, we must clearly understand that this is a fallacy and not the will of God, and we should not be deceived by them. The Bible clearly teaches us, if anyone fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from the people. That is why God even gave an opportunity, once more in the second month, for those who could not celebrate the Passover in the first month, due to unavoidable circumstances. However, if they still fail to keep it, then they can no longer be considered as those who believe in God. Let's continue with verse 14. A foreigner residing among you is also to celebrate the Lord's Passover in accordance with its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for both the foreigner and the native born. God emphatically commanded, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time, emphasizing that it must be observed, regardless of any circumstances. However, according to the law of Moses, in the Old Testament, those who became unclean because of a dead body were kept from presenting the offering to God until they were purified. 
Therefore, God allowed for the Passover to be kept again in the second month for those who unavoidably couldn't keep it in the first month. In this way, the Passover contains the will and determination of God, who underscores its great importance. God already knew and prophesied what mankind would say in this age. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Then, if we consider the words of Numbers chapter 9, exactly as they are, can those who do not keep the Passover, enter the kingdom of heaven? They must be cut off from my people. This is the heavenly law that God himself established. It is indisputably a grave mistake to think that we can enter the kingdom of God after arbitrarily changing or altering the law of heaven. This is why Jesus clarified this point once more in verse 21, saying, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does. What does he do? The will of my Father, who is in heaven. Doesn't this mean that only those who follow God's will are qualified to enter the kingdom of God and become God's people? Being cut off from God's people means not being able to enter the eternal kingdom of heaven, doesn't it? Let's continue with verse 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. What do they practice? Lawlessness. God expressed his very stern and powerful will by saying, if anyone fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from my people. Despite God giving such clear warnings, these people did not follow God's teachings, his laws, decrees, and regulations. In other words, they practiced lawlessness. Thus, what did Jesus say to them? Even if you have prophesied in my name, driven out demons in my name, and performed many miracles that dazzle people, Get away from me. Away from me, you evildoers. Verse 24. Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. Should we only hear the words of God and not put them into practice? No. Despite God's stern warning, if anyone fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from my people. What if they only hear the words? and not keep the Passover. Let's see what happens. Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This means that although they may claim to be God's people, if they do not keep the Passover, God will not recognize them as his people. They may think that merely attending church means that God acknowledges them. But in fact, this is how God distinguishes between those who are God's people and those who are not. It is crucial to understand this strict distinction in the kingdom of God. That is why today's title is, Those who are God's people and those who are not. Who are truly God's people? Who are these people who keep the Passover, the truth of the new covenant? God acknowledges them, saying, you are my people. God has testified to it, and God has provided evidence for it. 
Then, what about those who do not keep the Passover? God would say, they are cut off from my people. In other words, they have lost their qualification as God's people. There are numerous churches worldwide, just like the sand on the seashore. However, if asked, do you keep the Passover? And they respond, we have never kept the Passover. Then, despite their claim, I believe in God. Does God actually recognize them? What does God say in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23? Away from me, you who practice lawlessness. They may say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name, drive out demons, and in your name, perform many miracles? No matter how they claim to have believed in God, absolutely, and fervently, in God's eyes, they are never his people. Then, you should diligently make known this important will of God to the world. God conveyed his will through Moses, and Moses in turn, proclaimed and made known to the people all the teachings he had received from God. We also must carry out that role. We must make the truth that we first heard and learned known to everyone around us. This is the will of God. If anyone fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from my people. God clearly said that such people are not qualified to be God's people. And in the New Testament, Jesus also said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of Father, who is in heaven. It is time for us to make people in the world aware of God's will, saying, Take a look at your current position. Aren't you in the position where God would say, Away from me, you who practice lawlessness. Let us preach God's will diligently, whether they accept it or not. Let's move on to the book of Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 4. Listen to me, my people. Where do my people here have their citizenship? Their citizenship is in heaven. Thus, God is saying, listen to me, my people, you who have the heavenly citizenship. Hear me, my nation. Instruction, that is, the law, will go out from me. The law that came out from God. In the Old Testament times, God proclaimed the law of the Old Covenant through Moses. And isn't it prophesied that God will proclaim a new law from Zion in the New Testament times? Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. And my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. Hear me, you who know what is right, you people who have taken, what have they taken? They have taken God's law to heart. Since today's focus is on the Passover, let us think about the Passover specifically. If anyone fails to keep the Passover, they must be cut off from my people. Didn't God very strongly declare the law of the Passover? Therefore, God is saying, Hear me, you people who have taken my Passover to heart. Do not fear the reproach of mere mortals. There are people who slander us, saying, They are legalists who keep the law of Moses, just because we keep the Passover. Since they don't keep the Passover, they end up portraying us negatively to justify themselves. That is why, here in this verse, God is telling us not to pay any attention to their words. He meant, only listen to my words. Focus only on what I have taught you to follow. Didn't he give us this message? so we won't be shaken by their hindrances. Let's see verse 7 again. Hear me, you who know what is right, you people who have taken my instruction to heart. 
do not fear the reproach of mere mortals or be terrified by their insults. For the moth will eat them up like a garment, the worm will devour them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever, my salvation through all generations. Let's move on to verse 11. Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter. Where will they enter? Zion. Isn't Zion the city of God's feasts? Is the Passover God's feast or not? Therefore, those who do not keep the Passover, do not know where Zion is, so they have not entered Zion, and ended up being the ones outside of Zion. Doesn't it become clear to us? They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Let's move on to verse 16. I have put my words in your mouth, and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, you are, who are they? My people. It is written, that only those who dwell in Zion are called, my people, by God. This is why we need to teach the numerous churches in the world today, that are not keeping the Passover. There are indeed those among them who are deceived due to their lack of knowledge. We must inform them. We must inform everyone about the Passover so that all people can return to Zion where father and mother dwell. We must be able to graciously preach the Passover to the myriad of people around us who do not know the Passover. So far, we confirm through the Bible that God bestows the grace of salvation upon those who keep the Passover and acknowledges them as his people. Now, let's see what happens to those who do not follow God's words of the covenant by turning to Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 1. Let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 1. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Listen to the terms of this covenant and tell them to the people of Judah and to those who live in Jerusalem. Tell them that this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Cursed is the one who does not obey the terms of this covenant. What is their result? Is the Passover also God's words? It is God's words of the covenant. Cursed is the one who does not obey the terms of this covenant, the terms I commanded your ancestors, when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the iron smelting furnace. I said, Obey me, and do everything I command you, and you will be, who will you be? My people, and I will be your God. Who are those who obey the terms of this covenant? It is written that they are the true children of God, the people of God. God has already made a clear distinction through the Passover, marking those who do not obey this covenant as not his people. Everyone, if you desire to enter heaven and be saved from the eternal punishment of hell, you must surely possess the wisdom to discern the words that God has revealed to us in the Bible. Let's see verse 4. The terms I commanded your ancestors when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the iron smelting furnace. I said, Obey me and do everything I command you, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. Then I will fulfill the oath I swore to your ancestors to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, the land you possess today. I answered, Amen, Lord. Verse 6, The Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. What should we do? Listen to the terms of this covenant and follow them. Doesn't this teach us to follow them without fail? Verse 7, from the time I brought your ancestors up from Egypt until today, I warned them again and again, saying, Obey me. 
In other words, we delivered them God's word, written in Numbers chapter 9, that they will be cut off from the people if they do not keep the Passover. But they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubbornness of their evil hearts. So I brought on them all the curses of the covenant. I had commanded them to follow, but that they did not keep. What was the result? The words written in chapter 11, verse 3, Cursed is the one who does not obey the terms of this covenant, was applied to them. Verse 9, then the Lord said to me, There is a conspiracy among the people of Judah and those who live in Jerusalem. They have returned to the sins of their ancestors who refused to. What did they refuse to do? Although God showed them his earnest heart, depicted in the Bible to keep the Passover, they refused to listen to my words. They have followed other gods to serve them. Therefore, since today's churches do not keep the Passover, although they cry out, Lord, Lord, with their lips, who are they actually worshipping? They are worshipping the sun god, through Sunday worship, Christmas, and cross reverence. That is why God said, they have followed other gods to serve them. Both Israel and Judah have broken the covenant I made with their ancestors. Verse 11. Therefore this is what the Lord says, I will, what will he do, bring on them a disaster they cannot escape. Although they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. The towns of Judah and the people of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods, to whom they burn incense, but they will not help them at all when disaster strikes. God established the law and regulation of life to open the way back to heaven for sinners who sinned in heaven and were expelled down to this earth, yet despite his efforts to make it known to all mankind, they refused to listen. Today, people keep Sunday worship every week and Christmas once a year. Since these absurd practices of sun god worship are being carried out openly, within churches that claim to believe in God. We must make sure to inform all people of this age that God is distinguishing between what is true from what is false, that is, separating those who are his people and those who are not. The righteous God has instructed us to give all people an opportunity. All the teachings of God are incredibly important factors that determine whether or not we are God's children and his people and whether or not we qualify for heavenly citizenship. Therefore, we must never forget them. I hope that the members of Zion will be able to clearly preach God's will through the Bible but if anyone truly desires to become God's people, they must keep the Passover. I pray that by doing so, all families in faith will be blessed, and all our brothers and sisters in Zion will be able to accumulate even more rewards in the eternal kingdom of heaven. By this, I would like to conclude the sermon. Thank you very much.